to the changes in the marketplace. That, that's one of the things I'm hearing. And, and with that, the ability to reinvent themselves, right? David Goodrow, how long did it take you to feel like you had achieved a level of success? I think it was like six months before I did my first transaction, too. And um, I didn't go through the ups and the downs of, of you know, the market because I wasn't in it at the time. Um, I knew what was going on in the market, but um, my first transaction was uh, a professor that worked with, with, uh, worked for me at SCAD. I mean, so it was like what I did, the first thing I did was start reaching out to everybody that I knew in my sphere of influence, and I made a lot of connections through that job, so I started reaching out to everybody in that job. And the, I remember the first one that um, I saw was at Liberty Park, and then after that, I think I sold 12 in there. So it was just like, you know, because I sold it at, at a really good high price um, at the time. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't stay on top of that business because I could have owned that to this day, but um, I, it, was, it really helped get me started, that one specific um, project. And then I, I worked with several builders and, you know, with my design business and, and knew several builders, so I was reaching out to them, trying to, you know, see what kind of projects they were looking for, and, you know, I was offering the service of, well, I can help you design the project and I can help you find the property. So that ended up um, getting me some really good business on some land deals early on, too. Excellent. Thank you. Ruth, how long did it take you, when you went into um, first time. general brokerage? First, first time. Yeah. yeah. When did you start feeling like you had gained some traction? Yeah, it, it took me at least 90 days. Yeah. Well, I would say that was probably my first closing was 90 days. It, it was a, I had a pretty good support group at the time, a group of team behind it that I was learning from and looking up to. I think that helped a lot and they motivated me because I felt a lot of pressure to get the work done and be you know, up there and make it happen. Um, but I'd say six months before we really started to see any, any real action. All right, great. Thank you. All right, this is one of my favorite questions. And so... Uh, I was, again, I'll start with Mark. Mark really came, um, well, the question is what differentiates you from other agents in your marketplace? And I've gotten to know these amazing people, so I, before each person starts, I'm going to say what I see as a differentiation each of you. Mark is known as a gentleman in the real estate market. He is so helpful. He is great to come up with. Other agents that I talk to from other companies know him as being a wonderfully, wonderful, helpful to come up with. He helps the other agents in this office. And in fact, I call him the gentleman of real estate. And in fact, his bio says, his bio says, nice guys finish first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which it helps because when you go under contract with multiple offers and you're dealing with Jenny, 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 they didn't do highest and best. They didn't do anything. They accepted our offer. They countered. We accepted their counter offer yesterday. We're under contract. Yay! Yay! So happy day. One of the things that I kept um, marketing, which we'll, we'll I'll tackle in a minute, um, but one of the things that I kept hearing in real estate was after five years, if, you, if you're in the business over five years, when you, they would do a survey and they would go back to their, your clients. And 95 or 96% of those transactions, those buyers and sellers could not tell you who their real estate agent was. So, you know, that was an eye-opener for me that um, how could your buyers and sellers forget the most, you know, their happiest day of their life or, or whatever. Um, and so I, my challenge was I'm going to be in front of them as much as possible and I'm going to make sure that our transaction is rememberable somehow. And I feel like that that is, um, a lot of my clients have become my friends and that's, Something that's... Yes, they have. Yeah. It's true. They have. And um, you 
you give great parties for your clients. But anyway, that goes to the next question. Diana Sevigny, I will tell you, uh, she was saying something earlier about, what did you say, kooky and what? You said <laughs> that she's not at all. Let me tell you what differ differentiates Diana in my eyes and my mind. Uh, when she prepares for a listing presentation, she is 200% all in. She does her homework, she crosses her T's, she dots her I's, she, in her own way, she practices that presentation, and she, she competes, I've seen her compete and win. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time when she's competing against another company, she's gonna get the listing, and I think it's because of her, her preparation, and that is what makes her stand out uniquely uh, um, in the marketplace because let's face it, most people wing it. Diana does not wing it. Diana. Um, and um, I'm going to teach a little class on how I do my analytics and it's so easy but it's, it's something that uh, people don't do and I, I give comps for really detailed comps for both buyers and sellers. And I had one, one person uh, say, uh, I chose you only because when you walked in with all these statistics, and it was easy for me to read, and the other agent just brought in little pictures of what sold and blah, 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 and chatted about how wonderful their marketing was. And they said, I, all I wanted to know is, Give me the details. So thankfully, that person was a detail-oriented person. But I do find that the more educated you help your clients be, better you look. Thanks, Diane. Leslie um, Erickson. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie um, does business in, in a lot of different areas, but she, to me, is the quintessential sub-market specialist. She has really cre she created a unique market uh, indicator. She is very well known there. And people see, she does know a lot about uh, construction, architecture. She's passionate about older. I think you live in a movie for Stored, am I right? So it comes through. You should see the wonderful marketing pieces she sends out. They are unique to her, and she is approachable, and she takes, uh, she treats her clients like family, honestly. So um, with the family she likes, or the family we like, right? So because um, there's some family you don't want to do business with, we, we all know. But Leslie, um, would you say that uh, a lot of your success does come from, from your, your sub-market, that you have created a name for yourself in, in the Decatur market? Um, to some degree. To, to some degree, um, and this kind of goes to one of the other questions on there, but I would say um, that to answer your question, what make, I think what has made me successful is um, attacking my sphere from day one and never letting it go and just growing it and growing it and growing it and it, it becomes overwhelming because like Mark said a lot of those people become friends and they are like family and at some point you've got way too many friends and family it's a little overwhelming but at the same time that's um, that's what keeps it is the kind of tried and true thing of all of the different things that I would do and the, the thing that I would say makes me different from most agents is I can stand next to the builder or the general contractor and talk the same language. Mm -hmm. I exactly say what they're talking about and knowing when they're lying, not lying, <laughs> wrong, not wrong. <laughs> so. Thank you, Leslie. David Goodrow, I, uh, getting to know you, I think one of the things that differentiates you, or a couple of things differentiate you, uh, modern luxury homes. You've really created a niche for yourself in that market. Um, you, you, you're, you take a lot of care in staging the homes that you list, and also your colors. Dave, your, his car is yellow, isn't that right? You drive a yellow yes. car, and so you will always see David in, in different colors um, that, are, that stand out, that are bright and happy. 
So um, would you say that those are a couple of things that do differentiate you and uh, make you memorable? I, I do, and I don't, I don't drive a yellow car to make me memorable. It's just part of it. I mean, I love, I love color, and um, I do think it helps, helps stand out. But I mean, that love of color just comes from my background. Um, it's kind of um, a part of who I am. I think that uh, a couple of things that I feel different. You know, first of all, and, and I work a lot with Matt Doyle, who's across the street, Opus. So I think um, we have a unique. Uh, uh, partnership because he's an expert in the marketing and I'm an expert really with the people part of it um, and I think and like everybody else I've, I have made a lot of friends um, and it is hard to keep up with everybody but like you know I send everybody Christmas cards I send anniversary cards every year I stay in contact with them I go to dinner with them I go to lunch I have three meetings lunch meetings this week with past clients um, so I think that those kind of things, um, you know, help because I'm, I'm actually now starting to see repeat business, um, which is really exciting. And um, the other thing I think um, helps differentiate um, me is that with my with my background, I can go into homes that are not selling um, for some reason, and I can make changes and I can. Um, make recommendations to these homes in order to get them to sell. I mean, we've had, like, we have one now on how Mill, um, it hasn't sold yet, but um, we changed the whole look of it just by having them paint the outside of the house. It yes, looks like a house. So yeah. just those kind of um, recommendations and things. So we've kind of been like, you know, getting into a lot of these, um, you know, issues in, in homes that aren't selling and how we can, you know, turn around and sell them. And, um, 